this is the second video in our series of programs on tracked undercarriage. The first video covered excavator undercarriages. This program builds on that video by walking you through inspections of oval track type tractors. I've put a link in the comment section on YouTube to the excavator program in case you haven't seen it. There are two basic undercarriage configurations for track type dozers. The first is the oval track design and has been in use since crawler tractors were invented. The second configuration is the high track or high drive design used by Caterpillar. This video will focus on the oval track design and I'll work through the high track design in another video program. Let's start with the basics of an oval track dozer undercarriage. When I approach a crawler tractor for inspection, the first information I want to know is if the track chains are sealed and lubricated. What I look for is a rubber plug in one end of the track pins. All sealed and lubricated track chains have that plug. Once I know the chains are salt track, I'll check the sprocket teeth for wear. Sprocket teeth that are sharp are an indication that the outsides of the track bushings have a proportional amount of wear. With salt track though, it doesn't mean the bushings are worn out. In many cases, the manufacturers have increased the diameter of the bushings with this in mind. It is entirely possible for the track chains to last most, if not all the way through a second set of sprocket teeth. Because of this, I check the bushings. I'm wanting to know if they've been turned. If they haven't been turned, I know the internal seals have not been disturbed and there shouldn't be any dry joints. If they have been turned, I know it is likely that some, if not most of the joints, can be dry. Track frames are attached to the main frame of the tractor in two positions. The rear of the track frame may be attached on a bearing at the outside of the sprocket, or to a dead axle or pivot shaft just in front of the sprocket. When I'm checking the rear attachments points, I'm looking for oil leaking down onto the track frame and down onto the track pads. Hard mounted frames usually have a dead axle mount on the rear of the track frame. Dead axle mounts are open to the elements and subject to wear over time. I'll look at those looking for open space between the axle and the bore of the track frame. The equalizer bar sits on both track frames and holds up the front of the tractor. On older machines, the bar sits on pads inside the track frame and the ends are free. There may be pads between the bar and the mainframe of the tractor. The bars on newer machines are pinned to the track frames through ball bushings. The bars on these tractors hold the frames in line with the mainframe. The usual failure on the bars is the ball bushings in the end breaking and allowing the track frames to put stress on the pivot shafts. Broken equalizer bar joints can be seen by pushing down on the blade to lift the front of the tractor and looking for movement of the bar without the track frame moving. The wear on the front idler can be an indication of how close the track is riding in line with the sprockets and the main frame of the tractor. Side wear on the idler center flange indicates the idler is out of alignment. All the brackets, bolts, and shims should be in place as they hold the idler down and in line with the tracks. With salt tracks, I would expect the idler to be adjusted to about halfway or less along its possible travel. Here is the front idler location on a new machine. As the rollers and track links wear down, the outside flanges cover up more of the sides of the track links. Roller flanges that are almost touching the track pins indicate the combination of roller and track chain wear is at or near 100%. Crawler dozers may have rock guards that cover the bottom rollers. You can estimate the roller wear by observing the wear marks on the track links in addition to looking at the distance between the bottom of the rock guards and the back side of the track pads. Let's do an inspection on this Caterpillar D9H crawler dozer. We can see the rubber plugs in the track pins, so we are looking at salt tracks. The sprocket teeth are nearly sharp, so we expect that there is plenty of wear on the bushings. Checking the bushings, though, shows some reverse drive wear, but not what would be expected for the sharpness on the sprocket teeth. The track frame is attached at the rear to the final drive on this model tractor. 
I'll be checking for oil leaking down either or both sides of the sprocket. While we are under the back of the machine looking for oil leaks on the sprocket, I'll look up to check the swing frame on this dozer. I'm looking to make sure the caps are in place and that there is some grease around the joint. I'll look at the equalizer bar next, checking to make sure the hardware and rebound pads are in place. This type of bar floats freely on the track frames, so it doesn't have a ball bushing on the end. The left side front idler shows some left side wear on the center flange and also has a large crack in the running surface. The mounting hardware is all in place, so shims might have to be moved to adjust the center point of the track on the idler. The idler is well back in the frame, but the track adjusted properly, so I wouldn't expect to see any dry joints in the track chains. Checking the bottom rollers now, I see the flanges are getting close to the track pin bosses, but they're not touching them yet. On this model of tractor, the flanges can cover a little less than half the pin boss before the bottom rollers are 100% worn out. After inspecting the other side of the machine, let's make a quick analysis of what we've seen. The sprocket teeth are sharp and will need to be replaced in the near future. The track bushings show little wear and they have not been turned. There's no oil leakage showing on the sprockets or where the track frame attaches to the final drive. The front idler is adjusted about halfway out, but the left side idler is cracked on the running flange. To review, the track links look good. The sprocket segments are worn sharp. The bushings have plenty of life left. The roller flanges are getting close to hitting the track pin bosses. The undercarriage as a whole is estimated to be around 75% worn overall. Now that you've seen a way to inspect and analyze an oval track dozer undercarriage, here are some photos of problems you're likely to see as you look at dozers in the future. The first three photos are of a D5G undercarriage. Note the sharp sprockets and the extended front idler. Look close at the tracks and you can see where the roller flanges are riding on the track pin bosses. It's easy to see why the bushings haven't had any oil in them for quite a while. The next photo is of a John Deere 450H sprocket. The teeth are worn nearly flush. Even though the machine has rock guards, it's still easy to see where the roller flanges are cutting on the pin bosses. Here's what a leaking final drive looks like on a D7 cat. And this is a leaking bottom roller on a D3 cat. Have you ever wondered which way a track is supposed to be installed on a dozer? This track is on backwards. Here's what happens when the track frame is out of alignment with the sprocket and the main frame of the tractor. I hope this video was informative and helps you save money in the future on purchases, maintenance, or replacement of undercarriage on your crawler tractor. If this content is helpful and you'd like to see more, please hit the like button on YouTube and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching.